we will take some applications of diode in a circuit. Basically, there are three or four uses for the normal p-n junction diode. The one is diode as a rectifier, diode in clamping circuits which are known as clampers and uh, diode in clamping circuits which are known as clampers. So, rectifiers, clippers and clampers these are the three basic uses of a diode and uh, we will talk about them one by one. First, we take diode as a rectifier. Rectification is the process of converting a AC voltage into a DC or AC current into a DC current one and the same thing we can talk either in terms of voltage or in terms of current, but often it is preferred to talk in terms of voltage. <coughs> so, rectification is the process of conversion of AC voltage or current into a DC voltage or current. This is the process of rectification. Let us see <coughs> how a diode acts as a rectifier. Let us consider a simple circuit we apply a AC signal here. This is the voltage axis and this is the time axis. So, this is the AC signal which we are applying here and what will happen? This positive cycle, the positive part of uh, the input signal that will forward bias the junction. That means, by forward bias again I remind that this terminal, the anode has to be at higher potential than this terminal which is cathode. So, this will be forward biased by the half cycle. If we consider the diode as ideal, then the current will flow and the output will give a voltage here. So, when it conducts there will be a current and there will be a voltage drop. In the in this part in the negative half of the input cycle, this will become a reverse bias diode and if we consider it ideally, then the resistance is infinite. So, there will be a, a break in the circuit and uh, the current will be 0 in the circuit and hence the voltage drop will be 0. So, under this condition, the output waveform this is the voltage, this will be like this. Like that, this is time, or many times we plot actually omega t in terms of angle. So, this is 0 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and so on, or in terms of time this point will be 0 here t by 2 and here it will be t and so on. This is the output. This is uh, that means, the output is not pure DC, but it is pulsating kind of uh, voltage which will rise from 0 to a certain value, then drop to 0 again for 
half period it will remain 0 again it will rise. This is called half wave rectification, half wave rectifier. Obviously, because out of this complete wave in the output it is only the half <coughs> that is why it is called half wave rectifier. Now, if we consider this as a ideal then if the peak value of this voltage is V m then this peak value will also be V m. If we take the practical uh, diode characteristics then out of this V m there will be 0.7 volts drop across this and remaining one will be here. In that case the peak value will be V m minus 0 0.07 volts. So, this is the half wave rectification. Rectification is a very important property. There is a no electronic circuit which does not require the DC voltages for biasing a electronic device as when we study a bipolar transistor which is simply called BJT or, or transistor <coughs> then we require DC voltages to bias the junctions. If we are using field effect transistors then we again require DC voltages to bias the uh, FET. So, every electronic instrument requires a DC voltage and DC voltage of course can be provided by batteries, but you know they are expensive, bulky. So, unless there is a portable instrument, portable circuits, then we may use uh, DC. Uh, they will not require any further uh, rectification, but most of the devices like at home what we use music systems, transistors, cassette recorders, tape recorders television or computer they all require a DC source and DC so and, and the power we supply is from mains. So, we have to use a rectifier and before that we have to use a, a step down transformer because uh, these uh, circuits will be actually um, rectifying a smaller voltages say from 5 volts to 30 or 50 volts. So, this is half wave rectification uh, not of much practical use because it will have a very high portion of ripple. Ripple is uh, what is the fraction of AC by the total DC. So, there is a, a small portion uh, a large portion of uh, AC also here. So, this half wave rectifier is not of much practical value. If we use two diodes then we get what we call a full wave rectifier. full wave rectifier <coughs> that makes use of two diodes. Here This is a step down transformer. For which the primary is connected to 20 220 volts AC. 
and how much we have to um, bring down this this voltage that depends what what how much we want to use in many devices for example 5 volts is required or 10 30 40 50 volts so we will use a appropriate transformer which with central tipping this is a special transformer which is having central tipping that means there are three connections in the on the secondary side these two which are normally they are in a, every transformer but here there is a third terminal the central uh, connection from the half of the turns on this side upper side and half are there on the lower side so this is the transformer which is made use in this full wave rectifier circuit now for when this let us see what happens in the upper half of the input signal this is the plus terminal minus plus minus therefore diode d will be conducting while diode d2 will be off so d1 conducts is on diode d1 conducts or as it is called this is on diode and this is off d2 diode d2 is off it does not conduct so <coughs> this will the current will flow this is a very high resistance so this will ignore this path and it will go the current will flow like this in the upper when when this changes that means we talk about this lower half then the connections will be like this now this will be minus opposite of this in this case this diode d1 will be off and it will offer very high resistance ideally infinite so we can take the circuit is discontinuous here but d2 will be forward bias and this will be on therefore current will flow this way this is infinite resistance will avoid will not see this diode and current will flow this way that means for the whole cycle the current flows in the same direction in the load r is the load load can be any device like tape recorder for example and uh, so then this will be the resistance the input impedance of that device that will act as a load so what will be the output waveform when this is the input for this input the output will be now n 
and so on. This will be the output. For obvious reason, this is called a full wave rectifier. A full wave rectifier and this is 0 pi 2 pi 3 pi if this is omega t and if it is time then this is 0 this is t by 2 this is the period t and so on. <coughs> so, this is full wave rectifier that means both halves are are converted into a kind of DC. DC means that current flows in one direction, but uh, actually this is full wave rectifier is still the output is not very smooth. This voltage wave this can be actually seen as containing a DC part and a AC part. Here this is the AC part and over and there is a DC part. This is the equivalent voltage as a function of omega t and there is a DC part here DC voltage and the ratio of this AC by DC is known as uh, the extent of rectification. <coughs> and there is a ripple factor. So, this is the ripple factor. So, there is a still a ripple and uh, in many applications this will be acceptable so much ripple because it will be a cheap circuit very economical just use of two diodes and a and that makes with a transformer centrally traped transformer that makes what is known as full wave rectifier. But in many applications in fact in most of the applications this ripple is not acceptable. For that we use filters, filters there are several kind of filters like inductor acts as a filter. Capacitor acts as a filter. and the combination of the two the most widely used uh, filter circuit is what is called pi filter. I very briefly talk about these filters and then we will because this is not the part of the p n diode actually, but since we are talking of the circuits. So, I very briefly talk the inductor filter inductor is used Here this is the rectified, uh, rectified output is connected as the input here. This contains DC plus AC. Now here this is V out output. This inductor you know that its impedance for AC is omega L. Omega is the frequency and L is the inductance and for DC that means the DC resistance of the coil is very small and AC there will be a very finite in fact large resistance will be offered by the inductor. Therefore, there more DC will pass to the output while AC will be prevented by this inductor and there will be a AC voltage drop across this that is the AC part is drastically reduced in the output and the, that has been taken care by the inductor. Similarly, so remember that inductor filter is used in series and similarly we can use a capster in, in shunt connection. Here is the V0 and this is again the same DC and AC that means that rectified 
output is given as the input to this uh, filter circuit. Now, the impedance of this capacitor is that varies with j omega c. So, for AC this will act as a very low impedance path and AC here it is DC plus AC while AC will find path here and this will be prevented from going to the load. So, this is a much better, much smoother output waveform available to the load. When these two are combined that is the best rectifier and which is known as pi rectifier, pi filter which is like this that makes use of one inductor and two capacitors. Here the input from the output of the rectified circuit, rectifier circuit and here we get V0, C1, C2 and L. So, first the AC finds a path here, it is filtered. Then AC is obstructed by this inductor again and whatever remains that goes, the AC part goes here. So, here we get almost a very smooth DC. This is omega t and we get very smooth, very smooth um, DC voltage. So, this is DC voltage. <coughs> Most widely used uh, circuit, filter circuit is pi filter to get a smooth DC which is required in most of the applications of uh, in electronic circuits. Now, this was full wave rectifier which made use of uh, a uh, central taped transformer. Central taped transformer uh, that creates sometimes problems, sometimes the central connection is taken out many times it is not exactly uh, symmetrical in the center. So, there are problems. Is there a way to get rid of this centrally conduct uh, centrally taped uh, transformer in the use of full wave rectifier? The answer is yes. And uh, we make use what is known as bridge rectifier. bridge rectifier is also a full wave rectifier, but it as you will see I draw the circuit it makes use of four diodes and a transformer without central taping. This is the circuit. This is the transformer and there is no central taping here, but there are four diodes D1, D2, D3 and D4. In the now this is AC through this transformer we get a smaller voltage according to our requirement, but that is still a AC as you know the transformer steps down the magnitude of the voltage 
but still it gives a AC output. So, for this signal first we take what will happen in the upper half. This will be positive, this will be negative. Now, in this case two diodes will conduct, this becomes forward biased and this terminal is connected to negative one and the same thing. That means, this side is still at higher potential than this. So, this also becomes forward biased. So, for the upper half, upper half diodes D 1 and D 2 conduct. So, the current will flow like this from here goes here, here and so on. So, this is the way the current continues here, here again like this. This will be the total path. And when this voltage for the lower half the polarities will be like this. Now, for this lower half, this one, this diode will conduct D 3 and D 4. This is now minus and this is minus, this is plus. So, these will be reverse bias D 1 and D 2, D 1 and D 2 they will be off diodes D 1 and D 2 will be off while this negative will forward bias this diode D 3 and this positive will forward bias diode D 4. So, diodes D 3 and D 4 they are on they conduct and the current goes like this. Here so this is the path current will take for the upper half positive half these two diodes will conduct they will be off and for lower half these two diodes will conduct and uh, this will be uh, these two will be conducting these two will be off. So, current flows always in one direction through the load and the output as in the full wave rectifier here also the output will be containing both and so on. <coughs> so, this is again a pulsating DC which will require the filter circuit which we just discussed. So, this output is connected to the filter here and output of the filter will be very much DC. This is much better as compared to full wave rectifier. By the way, this circuit is full wave rectifier. This is a full wave rectifier and it is called a full wave rectifier. That means, full wave rectifier 
circuit makes use of two diodes D1 and D2 and a centrally taped transformer. While this is also a full wave rectifier, but popularly to distinguish between the two this is always called a bridge rectifier. So, remember that bridge rectifier is also a full wave rectifier, but to distinguish between the two this is called bridge rectifier. This is much better as compared to the centrally taped transformer full wave circuit and basically at two biggest uses or rather advantages, two advantages. two advantages uh, will this uh, has this uh, bridge rectifier. Number one is does not require does not require central taped transformer. Second thing is what we call peak inverse voltage. Peak inverse voltage P i v. That means, the diode is subjected to the maximum reverse voltage during the cycle that is known as peak inverse voltage and there is a limit. And we will find that peak inverse voltage in this case for example, when this diode is not conducting the available output is V 0, but the total voltage will be dropped across the non conducting diode. So, P i v in this case is double of that available voltage. If we get a 5 volts here, then peak inverse voltage in a full wave rectifier will be 10 volts. The diodes which have higher value of P i v, they are more expensive. So, but in bridge rectifier, we will see that this is P i v in this is much lower. First thing is whatever voltage we are getting say V 0, V 0 and these two non conducting diodes will share the reverse voltage. So, in this case half will drop across this half of will that drop here. So, the uh, P i v in this case is much smaller. This will be P 0 by 2, which is a much better factor as compared to the full wave rectifier. So, these are the two basic advantages of using a bridge rectifier. So, bridge rectifier actually is the one which is most widely used and most widely used filter circuit is a pi filter circuit, which makes use of one um, inductor and two capacitors. So, that makes use uh, that completes our this rectification process and the use of diodes in rectifiers and remember these two advantages are very big advantages. Then <coughs> the next circuit application is in clippers. clippers. Many times in the electronic design systems, we require circuits to restrict the amplitude of a signal. That, that means, we want to chop off, we want to cut the upper portions of the voltage beyond a sub certain reference voltage. These are known as clippers. Clippers are used in restricting restricting 
the magnitude of of a wave and for that diodes are used. So, let us look at this circuit. Here we are feeding AC signal with a peak value V m and this is the load. Now, this will chop off the lower portion completely. That means, this upper half will forward bias the diode current will flow and we will get a voltage across the load and this will be V 0. In the lower half, the minus plus uh, polarity will be there. This diode will be reverse bias, this will be open circuit, no current will flow and the output will be 0. So, the output will contain actually this is almost this is a half wave rectifier, where from the input wave these lower halves have been clipped completely removed and uh, this voltage if we consider this ideal diode ideal characteristics then this will be same as the peak value will be V m and if we consider a practical diode then 0 0.7 volts will drop here and then the peak value this will be equal to V m minus 0.7 volts. Similarly, we can reverse it and we will have this is negative clippers. And if we change the direction of the diode and we feed here AC signal, then this positive will reverse bias uh, this uh, diode and in that case the output will be like this. These are actually series clippers. There are parallel clippers as well as you see to this circuit. They are very widely used this is R. Now, for the upper half this will be plus, this will be minus and uh, the diode will be reverse bias, it will not conduct and uh, the output will be So, it will not conduct and uh, the, the current will flow, this is infinite resistance. So, this is almost as if not present in the circuit and this wave shape will appear here. If we uh, reverse the direction of the diode, then of course, this will be the case. The upper half will give this polarity, it will be conducting. Conducting means almost 0 resistance, 2 resistance remember this thing it is important, 2 resistances in parallel 1 
high resistance and one almost zero resistance, the effective resistance will be zero. So, if the resistance is zero, there will not be any voltage here. V out for the upper half will be zero, but lower half this will be reverse bias as if it is not there in the circuit and then that will appear. So, in that case the output wave shape of this kind will be there. So, uh, these are the clipping circuits. Now, in these clipping circuits we were clipping one portion completely, but this is not uh, always the case. We can use biased clippers biased clippers in which we can choose that which portions we can uh, we can we, we want to clip. Here this is look at this case this circuit a resistance a diode with this polarity a battery a reference voltage is applied V R. We get the output here this is the input is provided here in with some voltage V i. Now, because of this reference voltage this will uh, not conduct unless the voltage here becomes in axis of V r for all voltages less than uh, V r that means, when V i V i is varying when V i is less than V r then this will be reverse bias and uh, we can analyze we can draw the equivalent circuit for this and analyze that circuit and we will find this equivalent circuit is this because this diode is reverse bias. So, that will be showing almost infinite resistance we can take out infinite resistance and then this reference V r this is V i is less than V r. Let us analyze this by Kirchhoff's voltage law summation of voltages in a loop. Now, let us assume that current i flows through this circuit here is uh, V 0 this is V i then we can write the summation equation this is the voltage drop across this resistance and then V 0 this is plus minus and uh, this is plus minus then minus apply for this loop minus V i equal to 0 and since no current is flowing. So, i is 0 and hence V 0 is V i that means, for what will be the wave shape wave shape will be this. where this is voltage axis this is time or omega t and this is V r. We can choose V r as we wish if we want to limit at uh, 2 volts then this reference voltage has to be 2 volts if we want to restrict it at 4 volts then this has to be at 4 volts. So, this will be the wave shape and these portions have been clipped for uh, uh, the other way it will conduct because already this is uh, in uh, reverse bias and uh, superimposition of this negative signal here will make it more negative fire uh, negative voltage. So, that means, as if this is not there. So, then this is simple circuit and we will get that uh, the output will be for will be 0. Now, here we took in the in this case why this will be clipped off we can see that the equivalent circuit will be this.
for any voltage V i greater than V r this diode will be forward bias, diode will be forward bias. So, this is almost as a short. So, this is shorted here and this is the reference voltage and this is V r with plus V 0 and in this case V 0 this is shorted. So, this will be restricted V out will be equal to V r. This is what we have shown here that output is clamped at V r. I, I repeat and you understand this again that this is the diode which is forward biased for all voltages in axis of V r that a, the own diode has almost 0 resistance. So, this is ideally we have shorted it and then what you will observe here? You will observe here V r. So, this voltage is this part is clipped and we get this way. If we wish we can use uh, this biased clippers uh, in symmetric so that this portion is also clipped. For that we will have to use two diodes and both are biased and this is this circuit. This is V R 1, V R 2, look at the polarity in the direction of the diodes and here we get the output, here we connect the signal V i. If we want symmetric wave shape then V R 1 for symmetric V r 1 has to be equal to V r magnitude of V r 1 is equal to the magnitude of V r 2. And in this case the output wave shape for the symmetric case it will be this. This is voltage 0, this is V r 1 this is minus V r 2 and under this condition both will be identical and we can here this portion has been clipped off. These portions have been clipped off. So, we can restrict the magnitude of the wave. This is the topic which is covered in wave shaping as I said earlier. and these clippers find by wide application. Briefly I talk about clampers, what is the purpose of the clamper? Let us see here. Clamper circuit. First let us look at the principle of clamper that uh, if there is a wave like this where this is voltage and this is time axis and this is plus V m, this is minus V m. If this passes, this is applied to the clamper, this is the clamper. Then here this is ground 1 terminal is normally grounded, we get the output here. Then we can change the DC level. So, the output here we will get like this, ideally we will get where this is voltage axis this will be equal to 2 V m. That means, we have added 
almost a DC level for uh, to this signal to shift the reference. So, this is 0 and uh, this is 2 V m. So, this is a clamped wave. So, this is the clamping action very widely used in circuits wherever we want to shift the DC level of a varying wave and one circuit I, I take that here this makes use of a capstar, a diode and here is the load and here we apply a AC wave like this. Now, what will happen at the lower half? This will act as a short. So, the current will flow and if we have here a voltage V m, then for the lower half this is V m minus V m, this will charge the capacitor and uh, this capacitor, this polarity of this minus plus, we are talking what happens in this lower half. This will forward bias the uh, diode and the capacitor is charged. This is short diode and this is load, zero resistance, so nothing will appear, but the current will flow here and this will be charged with this polarity. And at the positive half, this will act as a battery now, almost as a battery. And uh, for the upper half, this V m plus this is having peak value of V m. The two are added and at the output, we will get a wave shape, a wave like that. Like that, that is better drawn. This is almost equal to 2 V m and this way we have shifted the level of uh, the wave, very widely used clamper circuits. So, this way we talked about some of the applications of diode in a circuit and uh, these are basically three most widely used applications. One is in rectifier, rectifier circuits are required in every electronic device and most widely used circuit is the bridge rectifier with pi filters. If we want to reduce the cost of filter, then often a shunting capacitor is used and that is capacitor, capacitor filter is used. And then we talked of uh, uh, clipping and clamping circuits which are used for wave shaping purposes and uh, we can cut symmetrically a wave, we can restrict the upper magnitudes and so that is there. And in clampers, we can change the DC level, we can add DC in either way. If we uh, reverse uh, the role of capacitor and diode, then it can be done in the other way also. So, these are clampers. So, this was the unit, we finished the first unit and that is uh, on PN junction. We talked about the physics and the physical processes involved in the junction formation and uh, then uh, through potential energy diagram, we discussed how the currents will flow when the diode is forward biased and when it is reverse bias. And uh, then uh, we talked about uh, the properties associated that uh, associated with the junction, the contact potential very important and we derived an expression for that. Then we talked variation of depletion width and we also talked about the 
junction capacitance capacitances there are two capacitances in forward bias there is a there is a uh, in the reverse bias there is transition capacitance in the forward bias there is a diffusion capacitance but in forward bias the effects of the diode are dominated by the current flow while transition capacitance plays a important role when the diode is reverse bias and uh, then we talked about uh, these uh, other circuits so that completes our unit on pn diode